from the start line of the under 12s of the Perentini Wessex Cyclocross League. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, what is the worst bike ride ever? Poor old James here talks you through what happened to him last Monday. Yeah, we also have a cat rescue. We predict the date that time trialing will die, and we bid farewell to Taylor Finney as he announces his retirement. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Chris Opie might have the hair of John Travolta and the mindset of a killer when on the bike, but actually deep down, he's got a heart of gold. Whilst out filming last week, he thought he heard an animal in distress. <laughs> well, he actually thought it was a buzzard mating, but upon investigation, he discovered three kittens that had been abandoned in a bush. I promise you, this is much safer than where you were. He saved them from certain death, took them to a vet, and now they've been rehomed. Yeah, mm. but not to be outdone, ever the outdoorsman wow, Daniel yeah. Lloyd, he who once saved a sheep <laughs> from similar peril, actually spent the weekend fishing with Andy Schleck. Hmm. I've got a much bigger rod than you, Andy. This is a spinning rod. Is yours better? No, you can it, My first ever fish. So you take it with the left hand and take the hook out with the right one. You what, sorry? Finally, early last week, James here learned just what the worst bike ride ever might look like. I did. Chris and I embarked on a 24-hour ride to see how far we could get. And that wasn't the bad bit. We were both looking forward to a good adventure. However, it probably wasn't the day for him. Uh, right, you got it on live track? Yep, we do. Job. Excellent, cool. Perfect. All right. Right. We should wish you the best of luck. Thanks. I would say you don't need it, but um, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> oh no, just, you really uh, know? just four, six hour training. Here back. we go, 24 hours, here we come. Good Cheers, luck, boys. boys. See ya. God, I'm glad that's not me. Yeah. There's no way I'd do that. No. Not even an hour in this weather. No. It is two o'clock, though. Is it too early for the pub? Nah, we can go. The pub, can't we? Yeah. A quick one. We left Sai, Ollie, and Dan at the pub. We headed up north, and it wasn't too bad. How far can I wheelie on the 24 hour ride? And then we got to go past our houses where Chris said hello to his family, and we even had to ride up a climb, max effort, into a 24 hour climb. Things all started to go downhill when Chris ended up getting rather deflated. Oh, I got a puncture. I've actually got a puncture. Puncture! Right next to a graveyard. And I guess, well, the graveyard was quite fitting. We were heading into the graveyard shift, into the night. The rain poured, and I mean, I could have done with a wetsuit going through those floods. Take me to a sunnier climate where it doesn't rain like this all day. Riding into a headwind and you know that feeling of putting so much power through the pedals but you're just not going anywhere. It was one of those. The temperature plummeted and we just got wetter and wetter. Is my eyes just kind of think about how hard it was. It made me well up. I mean, Chris ended up in an ambulance. Uh, we got to pick up a paramedic. It was a day. I, I want to forget. Oh no, you have a job. So, was that your worst ever ride, James? Because, I mean, it looked 
and sounded pretty grim. But was it really worse than crying for 20 minutes at the end of a Penny Farthing Hour record attempt because your balls hurt so much and having nothing to show for it at the end other than a blue and purple undercarriage? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was hands down the most painful, but nothing can prepare you from riding into the darkness, into a headwind with torrential rain. I mean, it was... Sorry, I got to, my commute is pretty good preparation for that at the moment. That's exactly what it's like, riding home from work. <laughs> Well, yeah, but that's why it was so bad, we even had to abort the mission. I mean, Opie wasn't enjoying it either. Is that Chris in an ambulance, James? Yes, it is, yes. But how, what was your worst ride ever? Well, I've been having a thing, mate, and actually it's really tough to choose. Technically, it probably should be the ride where I stacked it on a tram track and then crashed headfirst into oncoming traffic. I mean, that was really bad, but then, I don't know, like, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it doesn't really have to be the actual ride, does it? It could be something that happened on the ride. For example, I mean, you stopped for a coffee and your bike got nicked. Yeah, I mean, that would be bad, wouldn't it? Yeah, or you got dumped by your girlfriend or boyfriend. Mid-ride. I mean, that's just brutal. That, yeah. would re that would be a terrible ride. Or you got caught short and had to take a poo in a bush. Hey, Si. Well, I mean, the actual ride itself wasn't that bad, e even afterwards. Um, if I'm completely honest, James, I think most of my worst rides, like yours, have revolved around the weather, basically getting cold. Like the time I got hypothermia whilst on a warm weather training camp in Spain. But, and here's the thing, mate, I've been dining out on that story for close to 15 years now, so maybe the worst bike rides are actually sometimes the best <laughs> bike rides. I mean, I got away with it, and now I've got a story to tell. I'd have to agree with that, you know, because the best stories can come from the worst situations or the toughest rides or even the hardest. God, we're a weird bunch, aren't we? We are. We yeah. cyclists are a weird bunch. Yeah. In fact, we would love to know what you think about this. What are your worst ever bike rides and why? Plus, are they kind of secretly the best yes. ones? Make sure you let us know in the comment section. And if you have just been dumped by your girlfriend or boyfriend, you can share that too and, uh, you know, we'll give you a, a digital hug. We're excited to announce that you can now book on the next GCN event, GCN Mallorca, which is on the 26th to the 30th of March next year. That's right, Hank and I are gonna be there, along with all the other GCN presenters, for four days of most excellent riding. We've got routes for different abilities. We also have masterclasses there now, plus, each guest will receive an eight-week complimentary personalized training plan oh. from the GCN Events training partner, Spokes. So you can pretty much guarantee that you will leave a better rider than when you started. Except, I was thinking about this, mate. If Chris Froome signs up, yeah, and he might, I, I suppose, he probably wouldn't leave better than when he started, especially if he tries to keep up with Lloydie in the evenings. Yeah. But it's not all hard work because much emphasis is spent on off the bike entertainment as on the bike, as our guests of last event will definitely attest to. They will indeed. So if you like bikes and like having fun, this is the event for you. Yes, it is. Yeah. In all seriousness though, uh, we did have a mega time. It was last really year, good. It was I really cool. I really loved it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, head over to gcnevents.co uh, and if you're interested, sign up. We'll see you there. GCN Inspiration Now, that part of the show where we pick out the three best photos that you've all been sending in over the last week that inspire us to ride our bikes. And of course, there are prizes up for grabs. Third place this week is the now traditional GCN cap. In second place, you get a pair. These are hot off the press. So if you're a member of the club, you would have received these today. What a pair of these and three months free subscription to the GCN Club. That is cool, Club isn't it? That. And then, first place this week. Oh, Lloydie's left. I thought he was gonna take it to when he went to see Andy. Anyway, uh, we have, of course, a matching undervest and GCN fan kit jersey, which, uh, which I like very much. Uh, okay, without further ado then, who is gonna win the hat this week? Here's the photo, and it is from Richard, uh, taken of Lilydale Lake in Melbourne. He said, one of my morning gravel rides, a view around the lake with Mount Dandenong in the background. That's wow. a beauty, isn't it? it I like that. stunning, doesn't it? You can yeah. see the steam coming off the lake. Beautiful. Yeah, our, our Southern Hemisphere viewers 
going to be quite smug right now as they're, oh. as they're eyeballing a beautiful spring and summer. But, James, it's not all bad in the Northern it's Hemisphere, not. is it? As second place proves. It is Isidore from Austria. Good motivation for going out cycling in the cold autumn mountains. Now, look at that for a view. That is absolutely autumn. fantastic. Autumn is stunning, isn't it? Isn't it just? I mean, not not right here right now at the moment as no. you found out yeah. last monday uh but in austria yeah in austria it looks <laughs> great you could have ridden 24 hours around oh, there, mate. it would have been fantastic walk in the park right who's winner uh, okay the winner but this week one. is gilbert from albuquerque new mexico look at that that is unreal yeah no mountains no sunrise no sunset just 700 hot air balloons that go up in one mass ascension he said and there's a uh, cheeky little specialized in the foreground as well oh, which so looks very fun. nice too very worthy winner a very very worthy winner very worthy winner of the latest gcn fan kit as well so uh, make sure you keep your inspirational photos coming in on the app or indeed uh, the old school ways uh, via the gcn uploader but I don't know why you wouldn't just use the app. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and it was a big day in our world last Tuesday as the 2020 Tour de France route was unveiled in Paris. It was. I'm Marty from GCN Racing here to fill you in. Starting firstly with the disappointment in the form of La Course. Excellent that it returns, less good that it's moved back to Paris and away from some of the more challenging routes of the last couple of years. Hopefully, ASO will deliver a premium women's stage race soon. As for the tour though, there are a few surprises in store for the riders, like a summit finish on stage six, where the riders will head up the Orsia Merlet climb, which stands 1,840 meters high and was last featured on the tour in 1989. In total, there are six summit finishes, but the big one, the queen stage of the race, is on stage 17, which includes an ascent of the Col de la Madeleine and then a brand new climb, the Col de Lodz. It's actually a newly built road for cyclists. That stands 2,304 meters high. Now, the seventh highest pass in the Tour de France. Seriously, it used to be just 2,000 meters high, and then they went and put another six kilometers of tarmac on it. Oh, that's a Isn't nice that new cool? tarmac. That's right. It's not a patch on Val Turen, but maybe one day they'll stick some tarmac up there as well and go out to 3,000, whatever it was, 150 You did meters. go high, didn't you? We did, mate. Poor Jeremy got altitude sickness up there. <gasps> but that's not the only thing, because the 2020 tour only features 36 kilometres of time trialling, the least amount of time trialling in recent years. That's right, although 2017 pushes it close, they had 36 and a half. Whilst I every metre counts. Does. But, but I did do some investigating and went back to 2005, where there was 141 kilometres of time trials. And then it kind of decreased from there, all the way down for the Giro, the Welter, and the Tour 2. And then I put it in a graph, and these are my findings. Whoa, nice graph, mate. Did you do that? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Mm. Anyway, clearly it does show that time trialing is on the demise. But what happens, James, if we extend those trend lines? Can we see the day it'll actually die? Yes. So there will be absolutely no time trials in the Tour de France from 2030, the Giro 2032, and interestingly, the Vuelta 2045. Well, that is interesting, mm. isn't it, James? Because actually, the Vuelta's been leading the way in terms of lack of time trial and kilometers in recent years, which leads me to wonder whether our conclusion is slightly flawed. But nevertheless, this is a subject that we will definitely return to in the coming weeks. Yeah, but a rider who won't be at next year's tour, let alone 2030, is the American, Taylor Finney. He announced his retirement at just the age of 29. He's been quite the character over the years, yes. including getting the accolade for the most eccentric interviewee you've ever had the pleasure of talking to. You're welcome. I usually charge. Uh, Two to three million dollars each for these <laughs> sort of tips. I can't remember what I was that's right. Oh, that's right, training. Okay. All right. Are you allowed to swear on this? We'll cut that bit out, it's fine. <laughs> you can swear. No, you can't. Um, right, so if you're not a flatline kind of a dude. Who are you to tell me what I can, can and cannot do? You can, you can do whatever you want, Taylor. <laughs> we decide what goes on on the internet. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's your classical balance of like, you got this to like, you should retire today. 
That's, this is what time trialing, this is the bread and butter of time trialing, is pushing yourself to the point of... Retiring. Maybe considering <laughs> retirement, but then at the same time, you kind of have to get to that point to be able to win any of these bike races, so... Yeah. A lot of people think they have to, like, make it uncomfortable and make it as fast as they can or, like, make it whatever. But if you find comfort, then then you can work from there. That's the foundation that you need. Cool. Sounds pretty zen, man. Yeah. I'm a zen-ass dude, so... Nice. Great stuff. Uh, <laughs> right. that, we'll, just, we'll just wrap it up there, then. I'm, I'm going to leave it there. Up next, what does Chris Froome think about while he's on the toilet? It's, it's more what's been before. That was a great video, that one, actually. You saw it. Was that a real video? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, you know, watch it. I don't really watch was, you guys' we, stuff. We, we give some great insight, Taylor, <laughs> seriously. That was quite the conversation, but let's let it not overshadow Taylor's race results. He was something of the childhood prodigy. Success came easily to him on track and road. I mean, he won a stage of the Giro and had a spell in pink in 2012 when he was just 21 years of age. He then obviously had that horrific crash at the US Nationals in 2014. And I think it's fair to say that that and then the resulting rehab from it kind of knocked him off track really didn't it yeah it was a shame that but at least he's well retiring on his own terms yes and i guess he'll find success in whatever he turns his attention to i think so but in other news there's been a world record that has recently been broken in the past week and it's as hotly contested as the penny farthing ones we've been pursuing but it might not have been held for as long no mm. kind of like 136 of the amount of time that the penny filing yeah, record held. But like nevertheless, that. one year after it had been broken before, Rich Flanagan rode 50.5 miles on only his back wheel. That's right, it's a wheelie world record. Get this though, Rich said that actually his target distance of 100 miles was foiled by a rogue gust of wind, which is uncanny because that's what foils me as well every time I try and do a wheelie. Yeah, I like what you did there, Simon. Well, it's true, mate. <laughs> but once ratified by Guinness, this will be Rich's third wheelie Guinness world record and will join his hour record that he did 16.07 miles and the 100 meter record that he did in 10 0.86 seconds. That's right, not quite fast enough to trouble Usain Bolt, but pretty swift nevertheless. Now, turns out that it's actually Guinness World Record Day coming up on November the 14th. So, they actually sent a list of potential cycling world records that we might want to have a try at. If I'm honest, I think they might think we're more talented than we actually are, because this was on the list, right? The farthest bicycle wheelie with no hands, which stands at a kilometer. Oh. Then, the fastest 100 miles by bike, full stop, which is three hours and 11 minutes. And then this one, the fastest cycle backwards for 50 kilometers. And it's a mind boggling one hour, 46 minutes. I mean, how, that, backwards. that's like over 25K an hour backwards. Well, yeah, let's forget yeah. those. Let's just bask in the world record glory that we've already got, shall we, from Mark and now Chris. Cheers, Simon. Sorry, Pam, didn't mean to rub it in. We'll finish cycling shorts with a giveaway from Continental. We've got these three pairs of Continental GP 5000s to be won by one of you guys. Oh, they smell good too. Yeah, well not only that mate, they're supposed to be some of the fastest tyres out there. We've also got the option for you of either the tubeless ones or the standard clinches. Not only that, Continental are gonna throw in a bag of their coffee to each of the three winners. And not only that, James, there's also a rather lovely t-shirt here. Very nice, that's very right. nice, and like then, that. if that's not enough, you also get a Continental Musette. It is your time, Si. Is it? Well, no, I mean, technically I'm not allowed to enter. <laughs> if you want to enter though, and try and be one of those three winners, then there's a link, as always, to the competition in the description beneath this video. So click on there. Good luck. And yeah, best of luck. It's now time for Hack forward slash bodge. That's right, first up we got this from Ausman uh, from The Gambia. He said he's one of the best wheel hackers out there and managed to repair his broken Mavic spoke when there were no spares around at the Tour of Mauritania. He used, James, instead of the normal carbon fiber spokes from that era Mavic, uh, an iron rod instead. 
Wow. Genius. It is genius. I wonder whether you felt it every time you were going around. I was just like, thinking the weight ooh, of it. Ooh, yeah. But there we go, fair play announcement. Uh, when needs must, yeah. use iron. Good effort there. Next up is one from Nasith in Israel. I was just chilling with a few friends at a bar when I saw this. This owner said that he started building a bike in his spare time, but morphed it in to what you see right here. Which is what? Exactly, what James. It looks like a tricycle with two wheels. With an engine. Yes. Or is it a penny farthing with an engine? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It looks like it might be quite fun for a short while until you crash dangerous. and then injure yourself seriously. And you got one, you get one of those things that they call a penny farthing, which is called a header. Ooh. And you go, yeah. Ouchie. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a bodge, that one, mate. <laughs> uh, next up, this one came in from the app. This is Brad Hall. Uh, he said, when the muffins at the cafe are so good, you need to take a second one home. And do you know what? I proclaim that an instant hack. That's a hack. 100%. Genius. I'd never thought of doing that. But what an amazingly satisfying looking cupcake holder. I do like a muffin. Yeah, absolutely. I hope you're going to recycle uh, that cup, though, and that yeah. actually that now becomes your regular muffin holder. Because uh, otherwise, well, yeah, we can't get on board with that kind of wastage. No, we it? can't. Come on. Next up is one from Papri Juz. I just saw your video on how to fit a bike into a car. Amateurs. Yeah, excuse me. Fun starts when you don't have a boot and you have, and you can't even install a roof rack. Here is my transportation method in an MX five RF. Yeah, that. That, that looks neat, doesn't it? And he said, actually, the challenge is to set the wheels in such a way that you can still see through the wing oh, mirror. I see, I which see where you're coming from. Which does look a little bit hidden. Yeah. Through the spokes. Mm. If you must have a Mazda MX-5, then that does look like a nice way of doing things. That's how you transport it. Yeah. That's a definite hack. And your mates can just catch the bus, I guess, with their bikes, can't they? I mean, yeah, a lot better to talk to, I guess. Well, they're... What, your bike? Yeah, well... <laughs> Depends where your friend is, doesn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, you do a lot of travel with Chris, yeah. so that's probably true. Oh. Uh, right, next up, George sent this in uh, from Copenhagen. Uh, he said, not only has this bike received the full hairy treatment, but the handlebars bring a new meaning to the word bullhorn. He also points out that there's no brakes. So that, I guess, James, is just a very hairy, horny fixie. We'll leave that one there, Simon. Yeah, bodge? Yeah. Definitely bodge. Okay. One from Jolly Giant. I have to say, I do like this one. A carbon fiber bell. I made this carbon fiber bell as a normal bell. It's too heavy and to see if I could. But he does explain that that is a saddle, if you're wondering. Oh, I see. I assumed otherwise, oh, but I... it's good that it's been pointed out that that is actually yeah. supposed to be a saddle because, yeah. uh, well, it I is... mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably a hack, I guess. <laughs> it's a hack. It's got to be a hack. It's lightweight. Yes. And it, it, we cyclists always like lightweight stuff. Yeah. Well, and Lloyd would be pleased as well because you uh, you wouldn't have to give it the reach around to get access to that one. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, right. Do please keep your hacks and bodges coming in. Uh, particularly, uh, now you can upload them using the app. So uh, you can also get involved on the app, of course, uh, and upvote them and leave comments as you wish, uh, which people did. A plenty underneath the uh, the bicycle bell. Yeah, that one. Yeah, there's uh, there's quite uh, there's quite a lot of comments under that one. <clears throat> Caption competition now, and your chance to win one of those. It is actually a caption competition, competition. now, isn't it? I so, like what you've done there. Thanks, mate. Yeah, and the caption under last week's photo of John Lelonga at Il Lombardia was this one, which I absolutely loved from Adam Dark. Swipe left, swipe left, swipe left. Ooh, pink vests and stringy arms. Swipe right. I don't get that, mate. What? <coughs> Tinder. <coughs> Tinder. Oh, right, okay, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Um, a worthy winner, Adam. Uh, this cap <laughs> will be good. on its way to you. Uh, now, this week, pressure's on, James, because Lloydie isn't here, so. Here's your photo to get stuck into. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna give it a go. Are you sure this e-bike's not restricted? Awful. Sorry, mate, sorry. Awful. If you think you can do better, and I suspect you probably can. Definitely. You know by now where to stick your captions in the comment section down below, and we will root out the very best for next week. Oh, we will. 
Right, it's Ask GCN Training now, that part of the show where we answer your training questions. And the person whose question we answer also gets a free three-month subscription to Zwift, which is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, this week's question came in from Nick Edmondson, and I like this one, mate. We've not had one like this before. He says, hello. My father-in-law rides an e-bike. Keeping pace with him on flats and descents is comfortable and it allows recovery, but I'm struggling to hold his wheel on longer climbs. Can you suggest any training sessions that will allow me to sustain more power on climbs of between five and 15 minutes long? Well, what a cool dilemma. Yeah, isn't it, Just? And I'm not surprised you can't hold his wheel because no. he's going to be putting out 25 kilometers going up a climb. Yes, he is. So, you could just try and hold his wheel, actually, which is great training, isn't it? Mm. And quite a lot of fun, but you could also get more scientific about it. And the thing that you need to realize is that five minute efforts and 15 minute efforts are really quite distinct in that they use different kind of energy systems. So a five minute effort tends to be quite anaerobic, whereas 15 minutes plus is much more of an aerobic type of effort. Yeah, and you could do some one to five minute max efforts, or you could do some 20 minute sweet spot efforts. And it's basically like you're riding up a climb and then you've got that little bit left over. That's right. Now what you must do though, is not try and mix up all the different length of intervals. So much better to be specific and say, right, I'm going to go out and do my anaerobic max efforts of one to five minutes. And then after you've recovered from that on another day, you can then do your aerobic stuff. Um, but yeah, like I say, just, just have fun holding on to that e-bike. How cool is that? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck with that. Even Lloyd managed to keep up with Mikel Lando when he, he? on an e-bike. As in when Dan was on an e-bike, yeah. Yeah. Well, he needs that e-bike, doesn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. Mikel Lando's quite fast. True. Before we get on to what is coming up on the channel over the next seven days, let's take our customary like look back at some of the best comments that you've been leaving under our videos from the previous seven days. Yeah, we had some great comments Always. under the five essential gym exercises. I mean, this one from Ethan Cubit was absolutely fantastic. I find it exceptionally fitting during the month of Halloween to have these two skeletons share a video on weightlifting, lol, which is laugh out loud. Oh. Keep up the good work, boys. Love the channel. Yes, thank you, Ethan. Another one under that same video from RT Rogers. Okay, serious question. Did Cy do ballet when he was younger? This position his hand took under stress at 241 looks strikingly similar to that of a ballet dancer doing bar work. Well, I'm not <laughs> actually classically trained, uh, but I have always felt like maybe that was my true calling. It might have been. Do you want to do a pirouette? Do you know what? I genuinely... You I did. So I, no, no, I didn't do ballet, but I would love to be a backing dancer. Like, that would be so cool. You know what I think? Okay, well, let's move swiftly on. Uh, to Ollie's how to get a bike in a car video. Uh, Bjorn Ida said, uh, instructions unclear. Accidentally put my neighbor's cat in my oven. Ouch. Yeah, that's not good. I don't yeah. know quite how Ollie uh, let you down we that might. much, Bjorn, but uh, yeah. we'll have a word with him. Well, we might have to send Chris out to go and save your cats. Uh, yeah, good point, actually, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll take the video down. I'm yeah. really sorry about that. Under last week's GCN show, Colin Hilson came up with this comment. The look of shame on Dan's face was incredible. He looked like a dog who got into the trash while you were away. That's true, you summed it right up there, Colin. Uh, and then lastly, uh, under uh, Jeremy's How to Ride Ruts video, uh, Zed Browning said, great camera work in this one, and Jeremy's great too. The mm. America team you have is awesome. I yes, agree. they are, and we're delighted to say that they're coming over, uh, firstly on a little tour of Belgium for some cyclocross, and then coming to hang here uh, at GCN HQ in the UK for a little bit. Oh, so, uh, Jay Powell's touching now. Yeah, it's gonna be a loving. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Right, coming up on the channel this week. Uh, on Wednesday, we've got all you need to know about bike lights. On Thursday, top 10 epic breakaways from 2019. And then Friday, Jeremy, actually before he comes here, is gonna hang out with Ted King and get some tips oh. on gravel racing from one of the masters. What's up, GCN Show? I'm here with the man himself, Ted King. We're here at your ride. Ted, tell us tell us what we're doing today. We are about to roll out on the ninth annual King Challenge. Uh, we got a 10, a 30, or a 60 mile ride on, on, on the docket. Beautiful day, fully just kicking. Awesome crowd. Yes, yeah, so, I was saying that there's something here that the UK doesn't have, and that is the uh, 
The sun. Yeah. The sun is out right now. It's a beautiful day here in, the, People are in New England. People definitely flocking to the sun. It's <laughs> a chilly day, but the sun is awesome. No, I know. I this is like this is exciting because this is your ninth year, and you guys raised nine. How much? How much? Nine hundred thousand, almost a million dollars. Just shy of a million bucks, which is freaking massive. Over the course of the ride, it all benefits the Kremple Center, which is a huge beneficiary. And I think I got to make an announcement. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're excited to do the ride. Then on Saturday, we've got a Rocker Corba epic climb with Mylen from GCN Espanol and also Heather Fell from GTN. That's going to be a good one, isn't it? Isn't it just? On Sunday, GCN Halloween special, which you do not want to miss because that one is going to be amazing. I just got this amazing feeling. Uh, to be honest with you, mate, I think actually people will be better off not watching that one because I think it's going to be... No, average at you best. definitely no. don't need to watch this one. No, I do honestly. No, trust no, no, me. no, really, honestly, you don't need to watch it. On, just... on Monday, Racing News Show over on the GCN Racing, and on Tuesday, it's back in here for the GCN Show. Seriously, it's not worth watching. They have to watch it. No. It's probably my favourite video. I was so excited. I don't know if you can tell. Three, two, one. Okay, one. come on, Steve. It's now time for Extreme Corner. That's right, and this week, We've got Tani Seagrave getting rad in the Utah desert. Oh. Yo. How gnarly is that? Yeah, that is pretty sketch, isn't it? So fair play, Tony Seagrave. Mm. Uh, right, that unfortunately, though, brings us to the end of the GCN show for this week, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That's right. And also, uh, if you're in the mood for another GCN video right now, do make sure, if you haven't already, check out Chris's look at the Rotor HQ, where he went to find out a little bit more about their overall chain rings. Intriguing mm. subject, I think you'll agree. Yeah, interesting video, that.